everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at Take Down Red Saber. This is a, a promising project on paper. It's a tactical shooter in the same vein as like a Rainbow Six or a Ghost Recon or a SWAT. And this is one of the few genres, if you buy into that narrative that I'm terrible at video games, that I actually do know pretty well, as Josh can attest. Spend hundreds of hours uh, when we were a little bit younger playing Rainbow Six Three. Not the most tactical of the tactical shooters, but I also invested a ton of time in SWAT Three and SWAT Four, Delta Force Two, games like that, Ghost Recon, uh, and and several of the expansions and then later versions of Ghost Recon that came out. So I know tactical shooters. Takedown Red Saber has uh, many people on its development team that were involved in several of those games that I named. So I was very excited for this. Uh, it came out on Steam. It's fifteen bucks, and it is a goddamn mess in its current state. Um, it, it suffers from a lot of problems that seriously make this borderline unplayable. This is probably the worst first-person shooter I've played in its current release uh, since maybe Aliens Colonial Marines, and you'll understand that that is not heady praise by any stretch of the imagination. Now, we're probably going to come across several of the things that make this game nearly unplayable over the course of this video, and I'm hoping that they're all, at the very least, it'll be informative as kind of like a buyer beware public service announcement, but also we might be able to see some funny stuff as well, even though playing the game itself is pretty frustrating. But the um, main problems with the game so far, absolutely horrible AI that just spins around in circles. Uh, enemies will see you and then immediately turn 90 degrees to the right and just walk away from you and ignore you. Uh, your teammates will, again, they'll say tango sighted when they're just staring at a wall and they'll shoot at enemies through concrete walls. Uh, that and some serious technical glitches that make this, it, that just baffle me. Like, the server browser very rarely works. People get kicked from games all the time, and I actually have flunked out of a couple of single-player missions because it said connection to host lost. And I'm like, I'm playing single-player, I don't get it. But anyway, uh, let's get started here. We're going to play a single-player mission, and uh, the only mission I have right now... Uh, well, I guess I have more missions, but I, I have spent some time on training uh, Kill House and training range, but those are boring. Those just learning the controls. Why don't we go to Biolab, the only mission I really understand. Uh, just a very minor quirk. Uh, I hate that there's no loadout screen on the mission select screen. Instead, you have to go down here to your loadout, and we'll say loadout 1. Okay, well, uh, you know, there's a decent supply of weapons that you've got in the game. There's uh, shotguns, assault rifles, SMGs, etc., etc. I'm not really a, a big gun guru, so I don't really care too much about it. Uh, there's it seems so far, unless there's an unlock system that comes later, a very kind of superficial degree of customization versus, you know, even games as old as the original Rainbow Six. There's uh, usually a few different kinds of ammo, some uh, used for, uh, you know, suppressive fire to I guess lower the uh, it's like sonic signature of your gun uh, some of them why don't we try uh, this right here sure um, some of them are used for like uh, armor piercing like this one some of them are used for maximum flesh damage etc etc we'll go with a uh, just a regular scope and we will go with a suppressor cool secondary weapon you have you know a standard assortment of pistols armor light heavy or uh, uh, medium, of course, and then, uh, you know, this is where it really starts to hit me a little hard. There's only three different kinds of gadgets I can choose from right now. Frag grenade, breaching charge, and flashbang. So, you know, I'm gonna go with, uh, flash, oh, and then it's a little confusing here. We have to hit Y to modify, and then we go back and we've got it saved. Okay, I've been talking here for far too long. Why don't we start our mission? Uh, so, on this mission, there is some voice acting work, but essentially, I'm just gonna skip over that. Uh, there's three bombs that are located in this Neogen facility, so we have to disarm all three bombs, lock down the server, and then get to the rooftop for extraction. So we can choose to start either on the roof, or we can choose to start in the basement. Why don't we start on the roof, and we'll go with loadout one, and get started here. So, uh, you know, to the game's credit, we should load in pretty quickly here. And uh, we're going to get started, and the, the main problem I have with this game, and maybe it's, I'm romanticizing earlier tactical shooters that I played, because it has been, you know, probably nearly a decade since I spent, a, oh god, it has been nearly a decade since I spent uh, a ton of time with Rainbow Six Three, uh, but coming from playing a game like Splinter Cell, which is obviously not a tactical shooter, but uh, it has obviously tactical and kind of staying hidden elements in it, this seems super weird, it kind of strikes me as, you know, Call of Duty, where... It's basically just a man shoot, but you die much, much faster. And again, this might be me romanticizing how uh, the tactical shooters of my youth were, but it just doesn't... It feels kind of like... Kind of... Oh, God. That door may have opened up and an enemy could have spawned out from it. But, um, yeah, apologies for stumbling over my words a little bit here, but it feels a little bit dissonant with, like, the theme of the game, which is, you know, sneak in, take them out, and don't leave anybody... Like, don't leave any witnesses, essentially. Uh, but then you just pop in here and uh, you know you're shooting people and even your suppressed weapons sound exceptionally loud uh, relative to how they would in other games 
Enemies usually die in one or two hits. Oh, there's another. Look at this guy just moonwalking over here. Okay. I'm not the greatest shooter, as you can see, but usually the enemies actually, their AI is sometimes okay, and they will. Oh, God. Uh, they will shoot you down pretty quickly. One second. I want to take over a dude because I wanted to run over here and see the body positioning. This is like the second time I've seen one of these guys, Michael Jackson, smooth criminal like this, and just have his body be stuck like this forever. Uh, I don't know if this is like their trademark, their baby, the animation they're most proud of, but uh, it, it certainly looks pretty funny. Does it look like he's getting low? I don't know. He's, he's crumping. I don't know what crumping is. Anyway. Um, yeah, like, it doesn't seem to me like there's any way to kind of get through these missions undetected. And maybe that is a problem with my expectations of the game versus, uh, you know, the realities of the genre now. But, uh, it seemed like when you play something like Rainbow Six, you could be a little bit more tactical. You could open a door, have some, uh, you know, throw some smoke grenades in, and then walk in and just take the dudes out with incredibly silenced weapons. But even, like, the suppressed weapons sound exactly the same, in, in my opinion at least. And I am kind of a neophyte when it comes to firearms as the, uh, like, full auto weapons. And I'm like, well, why don't I just take an AK-47 then? If they're going to, like, hear me no matter what, I might as well just uh, take a weapon that uh, can do a little bit more damage. So another problem that I have with the game is that your AI, sometimes they're okay. But for the most part, they, they do a lot of, like, bouncing around. I uploaded an unlisted video uh, of my AI. They basically just stood in a doorway and then just kept doing this over and over. Like this and then crouching, doing, like, a dance party. And they're constantly, like, saying that they uh, have discovered enemies, but not necessarily pointing them out to me. They'll be like, Tango sighted. And then I just look at them, and they're doing this. They're, like, staring at a wall into each other. Like, I get that you have to program the AI to, like, cover all uh, bases simultaneously. So if I'm facing forward, maybe they want to have one facing backwards. But do we really need this guy over here staring into a wall? There will be a lot of situations as well uh, where enemies will just seriously... Be or enemies and AI will just seriously be like spinning around in circles. It, it is baffling. Uh, on a okay, and I guess our other AI member has just chosen to continue staring at that wall. He's not going to come with us. All right. Even the animations themselves look really uh, clunky and not very natural at all. And that's something that I'm willing to forgive, of course. This is a you know it's a kickstarted game. Uh, they only raised two hundred and something thousand dollars, which actually is a uh, fairly significant. I suppose, uh, compared to a lot of games' budgets that I play on this channel, but still, you know, it's not enough to make, uh, a oh, I did get him. It's not enough to, pl to make, like, a AAA worthy game from an assets and, you know, graphical and professional polish standpoint. That being said, uh, this looks like a game that could have come out ten years ago. The textures and models themselves are okay, but the, the way that the models move, uh, is very, very jarring from time to time. So we have an hour to complete this mission. We're, uh, five minutes into it, and... This is, these games kind of, in my opinion, rely on, like, some serious, uh, suspension of disp- Oh, God, that actually gave me a physical jump scare. <laughs> and, uh, all of my team members now, I believe, are dead. Oh, no, there's still- we got Wall Dude down here on, on floor one who got stuck on his door. This door just refuses to open for him? Okay, that's a new one. I guess we'll go to the other staircase. Uh, but yeah, they, they rely on, uh, suspension of disbelief. Because, you know, you're uh, terrorists, essentially, or, you know, activists or something, have taken over this facility. But you have to rely on them, like, not having uh, any kind of telecommunications support at all. Like, you, you basically have to feel like, okay, all of these guys are, like, isolated from each other. Uh, otherwise, they would be on the radio. Like, as soon as they saw somebody, they'd be like, oh, I see somebody! Everyone, get ready! But instead, that doesn't happen. Uh, instead, you know, it's just one-on-one, -on -one, like, every single room is its own encounter, and that's necessary maybe from a, a gameplay standpoint. There's usually a... Oh, God. Okay, I managed to get him. I don't even know what I'm doing down here. I don't need to be down here. This is our other uh, kind of infiltration point. But, yeah, so it, it's really weird when you, like, come into the lobby of this building, and then you just start shooting people, and then one dude's left alive, and then you leave to the next floor, and people are just wandering around, like, unawares, as if nothing's happened. Uh, was there a dude on the staircase? Is that where I'm getting shot from? Yes, it was! Okay, congratulations. You managed to stop me. I have never completed this mission. I have locked down the server once. Uh, another minor complaint I have is that I would love if they gave me any kind of visual indicator at all. Uh, that, you know, my objective was close. Or, you know, maybe an arrow on the HUD or a map or something I could use to be like, oh, here's where the bomb is. I, you know, I get that this game is like, we're an antidote to modern shooters. Like, are you sick of Call of Duty where it's super casual and you can do whatever you want and you, there's no punishment? And it's cool that there is an antithesis to that. 
Uh, takedown Red Saber just isn't very good, unfortunately, so it doesn't make it a very uh, convincing argument. But that being said, there are some trappings of modern world shooters that I would love to see. For example, an arrow telling me where to go. And you, In real life, man, you don't get an arrow to tell you where the bombs are. That's true, uh, but in real life, my companions would hopefully be like a crack team of uh, superstar infiltrators and you know SWAT team members here, which is certainly not the case. Like, okay, my team's... Just like shouting. Meanwhile, they're just staring into a wall. Like, I, where is the tango? I don't understand. Oh my god. I, I actually just wanted to watch that for a second just to see what those guys were doing because they were all like congregated in a circle together. Um, as you can see, you know, when you die, you do come back. This is the strongest iron bars of all time. I guess those probably would block bullets in real life. A apparently, the game does have a realistic. I thought that guy was getting low again. His head's inside of the door. That's bad for him. Um, but apparently the game does have, like, realistic bullet penetration and armor penetration physics. That's cool. Um, from, uh, can't open the door. Um, from a gameplay perspective, that doesn't interest me at all. I realize that I'm not playing this very well by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, let's try one more time and we'll restart onto this mission. Then we'll try to play some multiplayer, which will probably last about 10 seconds. I think enemies are hearing me because I'm running. Do I have a flashbang? Let's try to use some of these flashbangs then. Um... Yeah, we'll try some multiplayer. That'll probably last like all of 10 seconds. There are some, there's a variety of multiplayer modes, all of which seem to be broken uh, as of right now. I've never had, oh my god, more than like two minutes of uh, uninterrupted multiplayer play. We'll just not get hit by that flashbang. Okay, and then we'll come down here. And nobody's here. Okay, that's admittedly my fault. I guess what I'm, like my major problem is that it feels a lot less, that he didn't die there. It, it, that was my bad. Uh, the game is punishing, I'll give it that. It, it, it nails that element of uh, tactical shooters, but uh, it, this feels a lot less tactical and a lot more shooter. Like, I, I guess I get it, but by the same token, it just it, it, it feels very strange to me uh, relative to all those other tactical shooters that I played when I was younger. This is not my way of say, being like, uh, get off my lawn. It's my way of being like, yeah, it's just a little weird. It's also weird... When you use a gun like this, your crosshair doesn't stand in the center of your screen. I don't know. That's a relatively minor quirk, all things considered. Did he die? It looks like he's on the ground, so I'll just run into this room. And, ah, okay. Just quick scoped him. So there you go. Call of Duty skills worked out for me. And it's weird for me that this game uh, takes such like an anti-modern shooter stance, but the most success I've had in the game by far is just by running and gunning. Uh, as I would in a lot of modern shooters, or as anybody would in a lot of modern shooters. Uh, this has actually allowed me to get the most success that I've ever had in the game. And I think it's a result of, like, enemies hearing you no matter what you do. Even if you don't run, even if you crouch around, enemies seem to have, like, superhuman uh, hearing and, and vision. And they, they kill you really quickly, so it's kind of best, or in your best interest to just run in and... Uh, you know, get, hit, shoot the enemy before they shoot you, because most people die in one hit. And the other thing is, I really, really dislike that the game does not have... Uh, oh. I really dislike that the game does not have a planning section. Like, that is, to me, one of the things about a game like Rainbow Six. I'm not sure if Ghost Recon had it. It's been a while. One of the things about Rainbow Six that I love so much is that, you know, you could plan where you want to come in, and you could look at a map, and sometimes it would have enemy positions, I think, and you would be like, okay, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to go in, we're going to smoke grenade this guy, then we're going to go around the corner, blah, blah, blah. In this, you you always get to choose, where like, a point of infiltration. You can either get dropped in on the roof or in the basement. Maybe you can get dropped in on, like, the side of a cargo ship or, like, I don't know, inside the hull. That would be kind of silly. Okay, do we have an enemy? Maybe not. Maybe. This is the lobby, so there should be a bunch of enemies here. Um, but yeah, it's weird. Like, even on the training missions, it's like, do you want to spawn uh, at the front door of the training mission? Or do you want to spawn inside of the safe house? And I'm like, I don't. I just want to do the tutorial. Just teach me how to play the game. I don't know if we need to go through all this. So I, I did um, complete one objective there. I locked down the server. Now we're in, like, the main lobby here. Uh, and, you know, we'll shoot some enemies and continue onwards. Again, uh, kind of weird that the best... Oh, where is he? Okay, the best success I've had with the game so far has been when I'm basically kind of sprinting. Oh, that's me. That's really refle reflective glass. Uh, where are these bombs? I have never found... Oh, there's a bomb right there. Okay. Let's uh, disarm that bomb. He must have shot some bullets, which is weird. I see the casings, but I did not see uh, anybody... Or did not hear anybody fire. Maybe a glitch in the sound design or something like that. Uh, so let's see if we can actually complete this mission. That might be nice. 
What's really weird about this game, and I mean that sincerely, is that so many people that I've talked to, you know, I talked to Total Biscuit about the game, uh, I talked to freelance writer uh, Rob Zachney for a little while about the game, and uh, they played it at conventions and events, and they were like, this game is pretty solid. Like, it, oh, it, the, the build that they played was apparently very, very different. And I'm not saying, like, they don't know what they're talking about. I'm saying I actually talked to them, and they're like, yeah, all of these problems that everybody's having with Takedown, including TB, who's played it himself since the Steam release came out, uh, those problems didn't exist in the earlier version of the game that they played, or maybe it was a more advanced version. So I don't know what happened here. Um, I guess it's not my place to really speculate, but... Uh, I, I hope they didn't have to rush this out because it is coming out on Xbox Live Arcade as well, although it did fail Xbox Live Arcade certification. Uh, I hope that they didn't have to rush their uh, release just to fit that time slot that they were given by Xbox Live Arcade because if so, that is a damn shame. Because I really do think, you know, on to some degree, there is the potential for this game to one day be okay. Uh, to be an adequate tactical shooter uh, that, you know, fans of the genre could be proud of and, you know, play and especially from them oh there's online co-op which is really what i would love to spend a lot more time with if the game actually ends up getting more polished at some point uh but i worry that because this is out and this is not oh my god the worst shooting of all time for me and him thankfully uh but because this is not steam early access this is a final version uh steam release uh i worry that you know people are just going to be like wow this is shitty and i'm not going to ever play it and you shouldn't honestly but it, it feels like one of those games that you know in a couple of months they're going to come out with a few patches, and then the game's actually going to be half-decent, and, uh, you know, nobody's going to care because the community's already evaporated as a result of the ill will that's been engendered here. So, again, this is why I'm saying that, you know, some maps or, um, uh, okay, uh, like a map or, uh, arrows on the HUD indicating where I'm supposed to go would be, because I'm just kind of wandering around here trying to find my bombs, but I'll hold the space bar and, uh, disable this one. I guess it's going so far so good. We're only six minutes in here. And I've already disabled two of the bombs. And uh, locked down the server. Now if we could just find bomb number three. Now that I know what to look for, it might be easier for me to find these bombs as I sprint through the kind of parade of dead bodies that we can see. Am I my last uh, crew member left alive? I think I am. So uh, I guess we'll just continue going up these staircases. I get lost so fucking often as I play this. Oh, that was my mistake there. Oh, I'm getting shot. No! That was some of the worst shot, uh, worst shooting I've ever done in my entire life. But hey, my teammate uh, came back to join me. He's wearing those sweet Gunnar glasses. That's how you know he's serious about this. Um, is there a bomb in here? Hello, oh, Mr. Bomb? Nope. No bomb here. There's a picture of uh, probably, you know, one of the developers there. Hello. He's drinking man cola. This guy's drinking man cola. I am, okay. It's, it sounds kind of gross, but if you're into that, I don't know if that's a Team Fortress 2 reference or if they're being a little cheeky. It's, I do love in, like, first-person shooters like this going around and, like, reading the signs and being like, Oh, sorry, it's not man. Maybe it's Marvin Cola. I don't know. Um, but I love going around reading the signs and being like, well, Okay, what's going on here? D. McGahan. Office number 201. I don't know if uh, that guy's doing something uh, in the development of the game. This is what I've, uh, you know, contented myself with. Uh, experiencing as I play through more Take down Red Saber is just kind of running through the same uh, looking room over and over not that that isn't realistic you know having been in laboratories before in my life uh, oftentimes they do look pretty similar is this one I've already disabled this one haven't I yep okay maybe we go down to the floor below us there should be a staircase over here that maybe I can take but uh, yeah I guess the principal problem beyond the fact that it's super buggy glitched out the AI is really bad and oftentimes you know you'll lose connection from yourself when playing single-player modes which makes no goddamn sense uh, it's just kind of boring when you get stuff like this like I understand that in real life you know you don't have arrows on your HUD that tell you where to go in order to you know stop the terrorists from winning that being said this is not real life this is a video game and this is kind of ruining my experience with this video game because I am bored to fucking tears here uh, we have nothing in here. It's been, you know, it's been a long time since I've actively kind of shit on a game during a Let's Look At, and that's because I do try to be, uh, respectful and as respectful as possible. I mean, you know, games are things where developers spend years of their life, and maybe this is their dream to come out with something like this. Uh, but in this, uh, so unless it's like absolutely 100% broken, I don't necessarily feel comfortable just taking the piss out of it just to make, uh, 
you know, a few laughs and maybe people will find the video more entertaining. That's kind of disrespectful to me. But in this case, this, you know, they raise $200,000 in community donations on Kickstarter. And then they come out with this, which is just like broken, basically. It's just broken and bad. And is this my teammate? That is my teammate. What's he doing up here? Um, yeah, it's just broken and bad and it barely works and it's frustrating to play. Uh, and, and it's kind of expensive, honestly, like $15. Uh, it might, I, th I think it's 15. It could be 20, but I'm pretty sure it's 15. That's, uh, you know, it's cost prohibitive for a lot of people for something that's not very good. Like, I think you're much better off, uh, picking up like Rainbow Six Vegas or something on Steam, which will run you less. Came out a long time ago, but is a pretty good game in its own right. It's got online, uh, the same kind of online experiences that this game has, or online modes that this game has. Uh, but is much, much better, despite the fact that it's also a lot older. So, I don't know. Maybe we'll check down here. This is a stairwell I don't think I've been in. I'm pretty close to just uh, calling it quits here. Maybe there's a bomb in the elevator. Does not appear so. I can only wander around and whine for so much longer. There's a bomb there. We've kind of been up there. Uh, there's dead bodies. There's me. Can I shoot myself? Ah, I can shoot the glass. Okay. Where's my teammate? Did he... Yep, I guess he got caught on another door and decided uh, that was enough for him. Um, I guess we'll head back in here for one last pass. Don't really want to go... I wonder if it could be down here in the in the basement. I've never really taken an exhaustive look down here. But if it's not down here, we're just going to leave. And uh, now that I know what to look for, it should be kind of easier to find. Maybe down... Oh, no! <laughs> I was doing so well. Okay, where are we now? Well, maybe I wasn't doing so well. I thought I'd already been in there and killed a man. I guess enemies, like, respawn. Uh, okay, so we got to find a way to get back down to the... You know what? I just don't care. If this goes down to the basement, then, then I'll take it down to the basement. But I'm seriously very over the, you know, trying to find positive things in this game when uh, it, it seems to be working against me at every fucking juncture. Uh, what do we have for our... We have frag grenades? Okay, let's throw some frag grenades at the bomb. That seems like a smart idea. Uh, so we'll just come in. This, obviously, that's where my dead body is. Just drop one of these fat boys in there. Is that going to explode in my face? No? It didn't even make a fucking sound. That's unusual. Uh, I gotta find this man. Where is he? This is actually kind of tense now. No! No, there's two of them! I can do it! I can't tell what I'm looking at, it's so dark. No! Okay, well. That's uh, the single player of Takedown Red Saber. It's really bad. We're gonna exit out of this and, uh, you know, press any key to continue. Let's try to join a server. So we're gonna hit join here. And uh, one of two things will happen. It seems like the worst of the two is. Oh, no, maybe it's happening here. Okay, so. One of the things that'll happen, that appears to have not happened here, is a, an error message will pop up that says, uh, Error, we can't find any servers, please forward port XXXX to XXXX on your router. And I always kind of have a, harbor a little bit of resentment towards games that don't use kind of default ports, and then as a result you have to go into your own router settings. Most of the time I just say fuck it and I don't decide to do it. Every server you'll find, 0 out of 12. I don't know why, because sometimes you click on it and you join. Oh, server's already at capacity. Was it a maximum zero-player server? I don't know. Um, so we'll, we'll go back and we'll try to join a, a game here. We'll see if anybody's in it. Uh, it always says zero out of 12 for reasons that are absolutely beyond me. Uh, we'll try to join Hornus in here. I've double-clicked on it. We might actually be able to get into a game. Much to my chagrin, actually. But so, this is another thing that happens all the time. You know, you switch from mode to mode. And, uh, you know, you just you find some servers, but... You can't join them. Like, you double-click on them, uh, you press enter, and it just doesn't work. I would say, like, 40% of the time, I'm able to get into a game. 60% of the time, I just sit here, and then eventually, like, two minutes later, it'll be like, okay, you need, like, to go forward your ports. Uh, so, it's it's absolutely 100% fucking busted. Uh, it just doesn't work. And uh, it's, like, repeatable that it doesn't work. Everybody that's having this game says the same uh, thing about it. Like, I had so many people, I was tweeting about this game last night, and so many people were like, how did you even get the online to work? Like, I've never been able to join a game. I know. Uh, I, I don't know what to tell you. I'm pressing every button that would normally be used by a sane game developer to denote join the server, but it just chooses not to work. Maybe click once and then enter. 
Maybe click twice on the ping. I don't know. Uh, so the online, you know, it, it works occasionally, but not very often and not when you want it to, I guess. Uh, there are some other modes, you know, in, even in single player, there is, uh, Tango Hunt, which is basically just like you spawn into a mission, kill all the terrorists, and then there's Bomb Disarm, which is you spawn into a mission, disarm all the bombs. Uh, but that's basically it for, uh, Take Down Red Saber. This is probably, a, a pretty, like, head start candidate. I mean, it's not head start, considering we're nine months into the year, but, uh, it's a good candidate for maybe the, the most busted Steam release of 2013 so far. It's bad, it's broken. Uh, I think the core of a very good game, or at least a decent game, does lie somewhere within here, but it is not even close to being there yet. You really should not buy this. There's other tactical shooters that you can pick up. You know, even Arma 3, for example, just came out. It might not be the best game ever made, necessarily, but it's certainly a whole hell of a lot better than Take Down Red Saber. Or, you know, again, pull deeper into the back catalog, pick up something like Rainbow Six Three. Um, I, I think maybe these guys had good intentions. But as of right now, this game is nigh unplayable and absolutely not worth your $15. So I uh, hope you got some enjoyment and entertainment out of the video, uh, watching my frustrations and occasional jump scares because I'm a little baby. Uh, but also, I, I hope you got some information out of this and uh, maybe I saved one or two of you from making a purchase that you probably uh, might have considered otherwise just on the pedigree of the developers and the, the philosophy of the game as well. Uh, I really resent that they've taken like an anti-modern shooter stance when their game is so busted. Like that's the cheapest marketing tactic is like, we're different from other shooters these days. Do you want a thinking man shooter? And you're like, yeah, but I also want my game to fucking work as intended. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, I'm going to stop ranting. Uh, make sure to click the like button. It does help proliferate it and get the information out to more people. A comment is appreciated on what you liked or did not like about the video. And of course, if you want to see more first impressions, hopefully of better games like this or better games than this in the future, make sure to subscribe. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time.